Reactive Training Systems. One time I was out of town training uh, with some friends of mine. Uh, some uh, people that I knew, they were kind enough to invite me to their gym uh, to train with them. So here I was, I was in this gym training, and I was watching uh, these lifters bench. And I watched this guy, uh, he had a bench shirt on. Uh, he benched a, a, an all right weight. Uh, he wasn't incredibly strong, but he benched a, a, maybe it was an 80% rep. It was something that was clearly extremely easy for him. And he benched it with great ease, and um, it was something that um, it looked good to me. You know, uh, there weren't any like obvious or glaring technical issues, uh, but I thought surely he'll move the weight up. Uh, but then his coach approached and and told him, you know, no, you your elbow was slightly this way, and you had this other you know minor technical problem. Uh, so you know, repeat that weight and. I talked to the coach and I asked him, you know, what, how come you're not moving the weight up? That was very easy for him. He should train heavier. And he said, no, uh, I don't think so. I think uh, his technique needs to be perfect. And, you know, we, we talked about it uh, a, a bit more, but it's just a, a point of disagreement between he and I. Now, uh, contrary to what the internet seems to believe, you can have training disagreements with somebody and still be friends. Uh, in fact, most of my powerlifting friends don't agree fully with me on every aspect of training. I know it's shocking, but um, stay with me here. You know, you can you can have tra- training disagreements and still be friends with people. Uh, but this is one aspect where I disagree with this friend in particular. I don't think technique has to be perfect. I think technique has to be sufficient. But the whole point of powerlifting is that it's heavy you know so no your technique doesn't have to be perfect the lift has to be heavy that's that's the point now perfect technique should enhance you know it should enhance that strength output it should also enhance longevity and do a bunch of other great things but in the case that of what I witnessed in this gym it was not an issue of that. It was not an issue of, you know, all oh, his technique is dangerous or is somehow uh, insufficient uh, for lifting heavy weights. His technique was, was fine enough. And I think that some people get so focused on having absolutely pristine technique that they forget to get strong. Now, we do have people on the opposite end of the spectrum, too, and most people that train around a bunch of bros or that train in a commercial gym setting, you know, they get exposed to that quite a bit, people that are focused on adding weight to the bar at all costs. You know, I'm, I'm not saying that you should go that way. So how do we figure out when do you need to focus and pay attention on good technique versus when do you need to focus and pay attention to... Um, to just getting strong and to kind of get at that problem a little bit I came up with what I call the 80% perfect technique heuristic now it's just a heuristic uh, heuristic is just a rule of thumb it's something that we we use to be generally correct most of the time uh, if that so let me tell you a little bit about what it what it means if your technique is 80% perfect then it's good enough and you need to focus on just getting strong Um, add more weight to the bar of course obviously strive for uh, technical perfection you know if you notice that oh your elbow wiggled a little bit that's fine Uh, try to fix that but your focus is on getting strong your focus is on adding weight to the bar yeah try to fix it but it's not so important that you need to forego strength. Now, if your technique is below 80% perfect, then it's insufficient. You need to focus on perfecting your technique before you move forward with strength. Now, that sounds sounds good enough, I think, Uh, but 80% when applied to a qualitative um, thing like technique is 
really ambiguous and, and hard to wrap our minds around. So how do you decide what's 80% perfect and what's not? Well, the, the delineation that I came up with is just kind of major and minor technical errors. A major technical error is something that puts you at a significant risk of injury. Um, it also uh, could be something that is going to get your lift disqualified in competition. So if you're hitching a deadlift, uh, or if you're round back in the squat, or if your uh, you know your butt's coming off the bench or anything like that, those are major errors, and that automatically puts you below that 80% threshold. You need to fix your technique first. Now, if you have one or two minor errors, which a minor error is basically any other technical error that's not major, then one or two I'm, I'm okay with. So if your knees come in just a little bit in the squat and that's the only technical error that you've got, then okay. I mean, yeah, try to fix it, but don't forget to get strong because of it. Um, now, if your knees come in a lot, like if you're really collapsing a lot, then you may say, well, that looks like that could be potentially an injury risk, and, and I'm going to call that a major error. Uh, so there's a bit of qualitative assessment that goes in with these as well. But I'm telling you, having a little bit of elbow wiggle uh, when you're bench pressing is not a thing that's going to uh, put you at grave risk of injury. Um, it's something that's maybe slightly inefficient at worst. Uh, most bar path inefficiencies and stuff like that would fall into the realm of minor errors. Um, yeah, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of clarity on what we call um, good technique, good enough technique, and, and not. And uh, gives you a little bit of uh, insight on whether you should focus on just getting strong or whether you need to focus on improving your technique. Improving your te Reactive training systems.